What do you think that Trump and the king of Saudi Arabia talked about this weekend? It's hard to tell. My sense is that um, as we enter the next six months, obviously, uh, Iran sanctions are right front and center of the discussions between the uh, U.S. and Saudi, I'm, I'm guessing. And um, I'm also guessing that um, it really depends on, on how much incremental oil Saudi can supply. That's how hard, uh, uh, I guess, President Trump can go on, on Iran. Right? right, and that really leads us to what kind of deficit you see in the market. And, and I took your, your chart where you're uh, forecasting a deficit uh, over the next year, and that's the question, right? How far in a deficit can we go right. when we, until we hit $100 oil and that's sustainable? What do you think? So look, I mean, I, I, six months ago, we were, we were all uh, thinking, well, Iran sanctions are going to take half a million barrels a day from the market. But uh, today, what's happened is that the uh, rhetoric from the administration has been a lot stronger on Iran. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and now we're looking at zero tolerance. And Korea, Japan, Europe, uh, India has been winding down. China, uh, even a little bit. Uh, even mm -hmm. China a little bit, right? So suddenly, we're looking at a much bigger disruption coming from the Iran sanctions. It's not going to be half a million barrels a day. It's going to be at least a million, maybe a million and a half. And it is that incremental disruption from Iran that is pushing the prices higher, as simple as that. The one thing that President Trump and the king of Saudi Arabia really agree on is they want this to bite Iran as hard as possible. Right. They are, they, their geopolitical interests are absolutely unified there. So what can Saudi Arabia do to make it easier on the United States, if you follow what I mean, to really say, yes, you can go as far as you want, Mr. Trump, because we're going to help you here? So um, let's, let's remember, uh, historically, the Saudis have uh, produced, uh, on an average monthly basis, a maximum of 10.6 million barrels a day. That's what they were reportedly at in September. So. It's possible they can go higher, and they claim to have an extra 2 million barrels a day of capacity from the current point. Uh, but historically, we've never seen it. And there's also a risk of reservoir management uh, mm -hmm. here, because you can damage uh, some of the, uh, some of the uh, 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 reservoirs if you, if you hit them too hard. And also, I think the other issue is, um, from their perspective, can they, um, uh, can they really offset what's effectively the world's fourth largest producer? Remember, Iran produces almost 5 million barrels a day of oil, including crude and condensates. So it's a very, very large producer, right, right after Russia, Saudi, and the United States. So it's kind of hard to, to do this over a short window. If you do it over two, three years, it's possible, because the US shale supply can come to fill the gap. But if you try to do it very quickly, the risk is that you get a spike.